We were going to have a shelter at this particular location. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could go ahead and if we tune it in to do so. Auntie, I work for the Chicago Park District for the North Region, and I'm here to support the staff for Amundsen Park and the surrounding parks. I'm the commander of the 25th District. Yes. Commissioner Torres. My name is John Robertson. I'm the chief operating officer for the city of Chicago. We first start off by saying thank everyone for coming out. This, in my opinion, has been one of the most difficult situations that we've had in the city of Chicago. Uh, this past Friday, and so that I could chronologically let you know as far as what I have found out, uh, this past Friday I spoke uh, to the mayor's office, the mayor's deputy mayor, or the deputy chief of staff, who informed me Friday morning that we were going to have a shelter at this particular location. You're gonna you're gonna be allowed to speak. And Is the speaker, when I spoke with the deputy chief of staff, she informed me that we would have this shelter here at this location, and I strongly object to it, and I object to it now. I don't, I don't, I, and I'm not saying that, and I'm not saying that because I want your applause. I'm saying that because we cannot take a, we cannot take a resource from our community. I, I have told the mayor this, I've told the superintendent of our parks this, and I will state it to the top of the roof. We cannot take resources from the black community, a community invested in. Now I say this, those seniors that come to this park know that I come here every, th every the fourth Thursday of every month with them. I know of the programming that's in this park, but there's so many other reasons why this park should not, and not just this park, but any park, should not be converted to a migrant shelter. First of all, we deal with security issues. Now, particularly in this area, our police officers have been working tirelessly to help reduce violence in the Amundsen Park area, in the North Austin area. And this, by no way, helps them in their efforts in reducing crime. I say secondly, I believe in a democracy, I believe in a democratic process that says before you make these decisions, these decisions need to be brought to the community. Now, I will say this. There's some out there that say we want to see the email. I can show you every email I have. You come sit down with me, I will go through every email. But there are no emails with regard to this. I received a phone call Friday that this was going to be a shelter. Yep. Now, one other reason is that we do not need this as a shelter. We have for months, for months, and even beyond months, we have been telling our youth, if I could please speak, We've been telling our youth not to go downtown, not to gather in mass, not to commit crimes downtown, because we want to provide opportunities for you in your community. 
Well, this specifically flies in the face of that, and it takes a very valuable resource from our youth. Our, our seniors have been able to walk across the street and enjoy programming here. It would be extremely difficult, extremely difficult, for them to walk a mile and a half or even get a mile and a half from here to continue their senior program. So I ask you, and I have never asked this of the community before, I ask you to join me and stand up against allowing this to become a shelter. Now guys, hold on, stop. I, I want you to know, I, I, want, I want you to know that I support our mayor. He is our... Allow me, to, allow me to finish my sentence. I support our mayor and what he is tasked with. Our mayor is tasked with over 15,000 providing for the well-being and, and shelter for over 15,000 people. Guys, I am, I am not going to try to talk over you. I am not going to try to talk over you. But although, although I support our mayor, I do not support his decision to use this as a park. We cannot use our parks. We cannot use our parks to house migrants. Again, it takes away from the vibrancy of our neighborhoods. And so with that, I ask you, I ask you to join me. Now we have not made this into a migrant shelter yet. But if we call our mayor's office, if we can get on our, our telephones, if we can talk to his deputy mayors, his chief of staff, we can do everything that we can possibly do to make this not a shelter on the Austin community. Speak. Is it? Mr. Glover. Mr. Glover, turn, you're going to get an opportunity on. to speak. No, 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 no. Turn the mic on. We're tired of hearing politicians. Turn the mic on. Turn the mic on. Good evening, everyone. I'll show you how disrespectful this is. On the 5 o'clock news, they projected that the migrants would be here by Saturday. Look at, look, welcome to the welcoming city. Well, I got to tell you, only certain areas are welcoming. That's us. They want us. They say they want to use this park, but let me tell you. LaSalle Street, Clark Street, all the office buildings. Nobody wants to be in the loop anymore. They all want to move west because of new buildings with better amenities. Those buildings are empty right now with water, heat, and everything. But they don't want the migrants down there. We're not anti-migrants, but this is so disrespectful for them to just sit up here with this crap and we're supposed to listen to it. You know what? If you would had your right mind and see a crowd like this, you would say to yourself, they don't want it. But no, these politicians, they think that they could just do everything. And see, another thing is you all's representative, I can say what I want to say because I take nothing from them. I don't need nothing from them. Okay? They have disrespected us, our community. They're going to tell us and just shove it down our throats. And we're supposed to like it. Yeah, you all are sitting there. And another thing, they do not have a plan. And so many migrants come in, they say, let's take this. Let's, let's take that. Now, you see a viable park here that's functioning well in a nice area. Say this was a bad area. They wouldn't be here. Okay? Another thing I want you to understand how we support this park. This park needed air conditioners. You think we went to the park this way? No, because we don't need them. We bought them. Supplied this old park. They needed a stove and a refrigerator. 
We support. We did it. The Laboratory Council. They needed a microwave. We give Christmas parties. And I don't ask these politicians for a dime. And this place is packed. See, they don't like people like me. Because I'm not taking their crap. And, all the, and, and Brandon Johnson and, and, Mayor, and Alderman Terry Farrell, they wear this hat. And it's there. And all this crap about it, I just got a notice today. Well, if they don't give you that much respect as Alderman, you don't need to be Alderman. Okay? Uh, so, so don't drink, don't drink the Kool-Aid. There are ample places in this city that the migrants can up the health issue, the shots that they haven't had. They're going to set this city back a long ways with this crap that they're doing. Just throwing people in. They don't give a sh In New York, half the hospitals are full with migrants. They can't get away to... Now, 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 I don't mind. I don't mind. And we're not anti-migrants. But it shouldn't be on our backs. All right, this is our park. Mr. Glover, thank you so and much I, for and, your time. And, 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 and I want to say something to you, all of you all. And when you leave here, stop depending on the politicians. And stop voting for the same people getting the same results. Go ahead, Mr. What's those two words? No, what's that one? What? What? Now, one of the things I'm gonna, a couple of things I'm gonna point out to you real quick, because he said it all. I can't do any better behind Guys, him. Guys, listen up and give Mr. So, Trust an opportunity. Again, to say. one thing about this is Chicago Park District facility. You have a Chicago Park District Board of Commissioners. They never voted on turning this into a migrant center. So, it, yes, thank you. Looking at tax bill, and it's like they don't even go through the process of going through the Board of Commissioners, not going through the community. And doing this to us. See, people talk about, and I'm going to defer some of my time to my wife, is the fact, I always try to talk before her because I never want to go behind her. But uh, people got to talk about the fact, it's like, they ain't taking nothing away from you. It's enough for all of us. No, it's not. No, it's not. Now they're taking away an asset that people worked 30 years. My buddy worked years to put together programs that they're taking away from us. Black people with a black mayor. Can't miss that point from this community. And it's like, what insanity, what are we going to hear from them that's going to change our minds from no and not taking out our part? And the last thing I ask of you, please, please call Anthony Bill, call all the aldermen and say support Alderman Anthony's Bill ordinance for a referendum on whether Chicago remain a sanctuary city. And think about it. this bill is not it's not to say kick off the migrants that's already here. It's to a point we just got to say no, because because if you all got to buy a hundred million dollars because it's three hundred million now and by Christmas in January, it's going to be five hundred million. Now, if you got five hundred million dollars laying around, I want to be in your family. First of all, I want to be your third cousin once removed. But the reality is it's got to say no. Because that's the simple solution is no. Turn the buses around. Mr. Trush, you got about Turn 15 the seconds around. Left. Thank you. Hold on, Miss Trush. Miss Trush. Miss Trush, hold on before you start. Hold on before you start. We have about 60 speakers. So we do have a counter up here to give you an opportunity to get your message out so that we can take this message back to the mayor. Miss Cotter, Miss Cotter Trush, go ahead. you to take a look around this room. I want you to pay attention because see I want Mayor Brandon Johnson to understand that you're selling us out for people who can't vote for you. We are the voters. We stood with you and now you stand and you slap us in the face. I tell you what, tomorrow we're going to punch you in the face at the polling places. We won't stand for this. We say no. Thank you. Because you care. We are not. Just, just give me a moment, please. Please.
We are not here this evening to tell you how you should feel. We're not here to dismiss your feelings. The reason that we are here this evening is to provide you with the information to understand how we got here and how and why we are presenting this information. We're not going to get anywhere, folks, yelling at each other. And I'm not going to yell. And so what I want to do this evening is I want to lay out for you the facts. And I want to explain to you how we got here and where we have to go. OK? So that's how we're going to start. I'm going to tell you. That, that Okay, folks, so, Alderman, if, if you would allow, allow us, because it, because you're not going to let me present the information, so, that doesn't mean we're going anywhere. I'm here to answer your questions. We are all here to answer your questions, to be honest and transparent with you about the facts. So, that's how we're going to proceed. Okay. Thank you. Sarah. This, this Guys, let me let me get your attention once again. Let me get your attention once again before we continue on with public comments. Let me get your attention. Guys, let, hold it up, hold down a little bit, because I want to go right back into public speaking, give folks opportunity to be heard. If you do have any questions also for any of the panelists, you can ask them a question when you step up to the microphone. You can't ask them a question. But I, I, I will say the next speaker, Come on forward, the next speaker. No. Oh. No. We got a list. But okay, we're doing five at a time. Where's uh, Laurel Steele? No, Danielle Hayes. Oh. Danielle Hayes is the next Okay, speaker. Danielle Hayes. Who's Danielle Hayes? Danielle Hayes. Put it, put it in order, we got it in order. We got it. Right. Put it in order. Danielle Hayes, Laurel, Laurel Steele, followed by Bertha Frazier. Ms. Bertha Frazier. And James Frazier. And then James Frazier. That's the first time. So Daniel, you can go ahead. Hello. Daniel Steele is from, okay, go ahead. Laurel Steele. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm not sure, Mama. Let okay. me just let me no, say. No, I'm not going to be sure, too. I ain't going to say the last one. But they call my name, though. I'm the first one. I'm Laurel Steele. Okay. Who's this park? The city does. You guys, the so residents of this city, owns the parks. So why are we having this argument then? We should be able to make a decision. Say that again, ma'am. Why are we in here arguing about this? If we I, own this park, we should be able to make the decision. I, I agree with you 110%. That's just like anything, like I own my house, I make a decision about my house. If this is our park, we should be able to make a decision about this, it. This community, this community should have been a part of the public engagement before this decision was made. Right. I agree with you on that. Go ahead. Daniel. These people live here. I don't know how actively these people use this park, but my son comes here every day after school because I have to work. Because I don't have any help, this is what this park was put here for, for my son to come here so he can be safe so I don't have to worry about him out with somebody that's not going to worry about his well-being. And that's important to me. You know, my mama did the same thing for me when I grew up. I came here all the way till I was 12 years old. 
after school, summer school, spring break, all that. I was here. And now it's continuing on to the generation, generation to the next generation. I'm, I'm, I'm 33 years old. I've lived here. I've, I've never lived anywhere else. This is my community. This is my park. This park has serviced me and my family for many years. Thank you. My name is Michelle Zappalo, and I should be on the list, probably like number 10 or so. Um, but my question to you is, if we shut this park down for the people that bring their kids here for sports programs, where are they supposed to go? Let me, and I, and let me go and let me answer that for you. I have an eight-year-old. He's been out here since he's been six. We have so many of uh, this, this sports program goes up to 13 U. A lot of these young boys, they don't have fathers. So a lot of these coaches, they are their fathers. They are their father figures. They come to this community four days out of the week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday for game day, and Fridays. So they spend part of their weekend here alone during the week. That keeps them a safe place. It gets them mentorship. It shows them discipline. It shows them how to be raised as black men in the community. So you sit up here and you move our kids out when we already don't have the resources as it is. My son also goes to Wicker Park. I haven't got an email about nobody setting shelter up in Wicker Park. But yet we come in a community of black people where we already get the low scraps. And then you want to take the little scraps, the resources that we have, and put us at the bottom of the barrel? That's not fair. And I won't have it because my son will be here. Uh, my name is Howard Ray. Sir, I have a hold star on, by my on. name. If, if, but I have a question for the elected If, if you're not Ms. Bertha yeah. Frazier, I'm going to cut the mic off because we're, trying to, we're but, trying to get order know, in here. We, it, they all in the back. But my question is this. Mr. People, James Frazier and Bertha Frazier are people next. Do not Ms. Bertha, Bertha Frazier. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I, I Tomorrow, can you guys advocate for the uh, migrants people to be at the McCormick place? That is the best place. That's the biggest place. That's the safest place for them. I would like to see what is your answer because uh, the mayor said that he, we must make sacrifice. Let the McCormick place, let those people make sacrifice. The money that's going, the 53 million, 100, 200 million dollars, let that money go to the McCormick place. What is your answer? Would you be would you advocate for that? Ma'am, go ahead and step up. Guys, I, I'm not calling off the list. If you want to speak, stand in line. Because this is this is not working by calling off a list. Go ahead, ma'am. All right. Is that we have since last August, since last August, we have received seventeen thousand. Over 300 buses. And as it stands right now, as it stands right now, we have almost 10,000 migrants, asylum seekers, that we have sheltered here in the city of Chicago. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. And so, La ladies and gentlemen, if you can, if you can keep it down so that he can finish answering the question, because this gentleman wants his time. question answered. Ultimate. So if you can keep your voices low. It's not running. Alderman Teleferia. Go ahead, sir. Alderman, we need you to take control of this meeting. For those of us that followed the process and signed in to speak, we need to be allowed to speak. You just cannot have had I, these. Ma'am, I agree with you. I agree with you totally. But unfortunately, I am, it, is, it is very easy to lose control when folks are screaming. I have, a order, I have a list of people I'm called to speak. There is an order to this. And we are trying our very best to have these folks that have got... Well, we have 23 shelters that we have stood up. Now, here's the thing, folks. This is a humanitarian crisis that we have inherited.
Now, Miss, go ahead and then Miss Larell Steele. I'm sorry, Bertha Frazier and then James. Having everything that's you know that's going on with the young people, but we have things for our young people here in our community. So why are you going to take that away from them? You're taking that away from them when you have all these schools that have been closed down. Utilize the schools. Utilize those schools. I don't have no problem about no one coming here, but utilize what we have. We got a lot of vacant buildings and things that we can utilize. Don't take away from them because what's going to happen, the crime is going to get worse because I, 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 I don't mind it's a devil's workshop so they ain't got nothing to do so they gonna just go and get in trouble. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mr. The deal we'll we'll, we'll, we'll do that in a little bit. I, I want to give the community an opportunity to speak. Where's uh, Mr. Melvin Funchwis? Uh, I'm sorry, Carolyn Ball? Carolyn Ball, the Melvin Funches. Okay. This is our community, and you just don't dump anything on us and expect us to accept it. Okay? That is not what we pay our taxes for. There's too many places. There's empty schools, empty buildings that you can take them to. We don't have a problem with them coming. Good luck to them. But this is not the place for them, not at this particular park. You'll get her name. And if we have to take the fight to City Hall, that's where we'll go. Okay. What's all you doing? Kanenia Smith, followed by Johnny Miller. Oh, you go ahead. I just want to know why are we not important enough for him to show up for us when we showed up for him? We voted for him. We walked door to door. We was out here advocating for him to be the next mayor of the city of Chicago. He has not showed up for us for anything. We had to battle the floods by ourselves. We have to battle this violence by ourselves. He doesn't help us do anything. And I want to know what he's going to do about this. I was one of the first Windy City cheerleaders on the on the first team they even had. This is what these kids need for this community. We got violence, we got poverty, we already getting scrapped. Why do we always got to be at the bottom of the barrel? I feel like we under the rats and the damn roaches. Y'all treat us like anything and we just supposed to take it. Now I'm not saying that I want the migrants to be misplaced. I'm not saying that I don't want them. I don't want them here. That's not going to help us. We got a school right here our kids go to. We don't know these people coming through here. Y'all can't track these people. Our kids are not safe. So I want to know why he not here Thank to you. address us and let us know what he's going to do. I think he owe us Thank that. you, ma'am. Thank you. John, Johnny Matthews, then Linda Johnson. Johnny Matthews, then um, Johnny Ms. Matthews, Ms. Johnny then, Ms. then Ms. Linda Johnson. Johnny Matthews first. Ponce de Leon. Who is she? If you can please introduce yourself. Good evening. Uh, my name is Beatrice Ponce de Leon. I'm the deputy mayor for immigrant, migrant, and oh, refugee Chris. rights. Oh, I'm glad you're here. Seniors. I want to share. That I, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming here. No, and every don't time thank us. We could have been doing something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I want to make sure I understood your question. You're asking where will people go right. when they're here. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that. Okay. okay. Guys, can we give her an opportunity to answer Ms. Matthews' question, okay. please? So people, the, the people that we're talking about are human beings just like you we didn't. I. We know that. We know that. It is not us against them. We don't need you to tell us that. No, we don't, need you. we don't need you to tell us that. We, it's not us against them. And that's the problem we don't care for. We don't care for that. We are oh. not insensitive. But we, 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 we got a problem with you thinking you're going to jam something down our throat. Yes, Ms. Go ahead, Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson, go ahead. Okay, Johnson. hold on. My reason. question, are you the one to make the decision to take our part? Hold on. Okay, let me Johnson, share this with you. First Ms. of all, Johnson. hold on. Johnson, hold on one first second. First of all, 
Ms. Johnson, hold on one second. Okay. You have to be quiet. Guys, can we have your attention, please? Can we have your attention? Okay. We have you a have speaker up at the mic. So we can hear. You have to be okay. quiet so these people can talk. You have to be quiet. Please be quiet. Okay. That is not our problem. My issue is you want to put a Band-Aid on a leaking faucet, and that is not going to work. You have no right to take the taxpayer park district and tell us and jam it down our throats like gangsters what you want to do. This is our park district, and we have a right to have a say-so. But we don't have a say-so. You all called our alderman and told him what he's going to do. This is war. How disrespectful that is to him. You don't have that right to do that to us. And we're not responsible. Y'all need to go to the root of the problem. You need to stop the buses, stop Sanctuary City, and it's not us against them. You all need to take care of it and quit crying and tell us this bull crap that you sitting up here telling. We don't care about what the mayor said down there. We ain't concerned about that. We're concerned about our park, our safety, our kids having a place to go and showing up our senior because I'm one of them. So my thing is, I don't need my taxes going up. I pay my taxes to come to this park and you all have no right to just make a blank decision to take it. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. We have Sandra Weeks and then John. But you don't have to take away our community and what we're trying to build here. We've been, where are we supposed to put our kids? That's what I want to know. I, where are we supposed to, where are our kids supposed to go? Where are they supposed to go? I see why the mayor just dumped shit on you like that. Because you allowed that, that, you allowed that. You don't let them come over here and take our, our community. I see why he did it to you. This is some, this is, this is horrible. This is horrible. This is our community. And you got, like they said, McCormick Place. You got all different type of places to send these people. You don't have to, you gonna interrupt this community that's thriving, that's doing well? No, no, your house. Send them to your house. Send them to your house. Miss Sandra Wayne. understand? Them buses need to get turned around. Man, listen here, man. Miss I'm, Sandra mad. I'm mad as hell. You're asking the questions, what about the seniors? And we would like to just have a moment to sort of present to you some of the, the options that, that we've come up with. Okay. We don't want no options. We want our part. Mona, we want Mona, our isn't that your turn, Mona?